فهذا إما جاهل أو ضال مضل وشديد من النوع الثاني ضال مضل Sadness, unfortunate, lost souls, lost souls. So that's Allah Azza wa Jalla guide us all, and it makes people who learn and teach our people, learn and teach our people, and not getting caught up in this and that and flan and flana. No, for sure, Yaqi, this person, this scholar, does not care about you or your country. Stock, you say whatever you want without no sugar. It's raw. He doesn't. He does not stay up at night if you have problems in your urban community. He doesn't care about what's going on in New York City. So why are you so concerned and caught up and obsessed what goes on in Jordan or Egypt or Saudi or Yemen? That doesn't make any sense. He is not missing his morning tea and breakfast because of the major social ills in Bed-Stuy, New York. Know that for sure. He does not miss his coffee and dates because of single-parent homes and crack babies. This is a reality. This is not a joke. This is real. So if that's the case... Then how can you spend all of your time, your energy, and your effort on overseas in the Middle East and neglect the real problems in your community that are dead smack in your face? May Allah help us all. Amen. ومن هذا المنطلق كان التعاون مع الإخوة في في بلاد الغرب سواء في أمريكا ولا في بريطانيا ولا في غيرها من البلدان وبل في غيرها من البلدان العالم آسيا وغير آسيا كان هذا المنطلق التواصي بالحق والتواصي بالصبر. المستقيم نقول له أنت على استقامة دم عليها وداوم والذي خرج نقول انتبه أنت خرجت لا بد ترجع هذا خطأ فإن لم ترجع أنت الذي تلوم نفسك وأنت الملام أعطيتم بعض المشايخ ظهوركم الذين هم من أنصح الناس لكم وقد نصحوكم ديانة ما بينكم وبينهم مال ولا درهم صحيح لله أنتم جئتموهم لله فأعطوكم ما يرضونه لأنفسهم ديانة ولكم يعني ليس بين المشايخ وبين إخواننا هناك سبب ولا نسب لا بينهم سبب المال والدنيا ولا نسب إنما نسب السنة والعلم هذا النسب السلفيون في أمريكا مثل السلفيون في سيبيريا مثل المسلمون والسلفيون في نيجيريا ومثلها في غانا ومثلها في قوقاز كلهم واحد ما ننصح لكم في أمريكا هو الذي نصحنا قبل أيام لإخوة من هولندا وهو الذي نصحناه إخوة من طاجكستان وهو الذي نصحنا إخوة من أوزباكستان هو هو ما نختلف لأن هذا دين هؤلاء المشايخ الذين ينصحون لكم وكانوا يحرصون عليكم ما يريدون منكم جزاء ولا شكورا يريدون لكم ولأهليكم في ذاك البلد أن تستقيم الأمور على السنة وتمشي الأمور على الصواب You don't concern yourself with your ibadah. You don't protect your God. You guard your tongue. Guard your private parts. Guard your eyes, your hearing, your seeing, your sight, your mouth, your belly. What it contains, Allah will leave you to yourself. If you don't call upon Allah. Ulema remind us of this. And they fear Allah the most. But yet we have some despicable people. After even graduating from the ulema. So ungrateful to the people who taught them. So ungrateful and deluded by their status. Yes, those who went to America. And they're deluded by their status. Saying that, oh, we don't, we don't need scholars anymore. We are living our own life. We have our own context. We don't need ulama. And one of them, despicable, he said something which is evil, Allah. He said about the ulama. They're too busy eating dates, drinking coffee and eating dates to think about our problems. Ya jahil, ya rajul, Allah ya ahdik. Ulama are too busy. When they're teaching you to connect yourself with Allah, to remember Allah, to worship Allah, what is that doing to your society? And the other one said, Usul al-Talata, 
These people are too busy with Tawheed. Too busy thinking that Usul Talata Kitab Tawheed, or he said Usul Talata only, that this will, uh, this will uh, solve society ills, society problems. If Tawheed is not going to solve it, Ya Abdullah, what is? You think that the society ill is going to be solved by you being intellectual and you looking and you have to start with Tawheed, whatever you need, you need Tawheed. You need ikhlas in, ikhlas in everything. That means you haven't understood Tawheed. You haven't understood the Surah Talatha. To know the reality of the Surah Talatha. To know the reality of Kitab Tawheed. Of course it will change society. What did the old Anbiya call to? If it wasn't Tawheed, to begin with, what did Prophet said Mu'ad radiallahu to do? إِنَّكَ دَاهِبُونَ عَلَى الْكِتَابِ فَلِيَكُنْ أَوَلَ مَا تَدْعُهُمْ إِلَيْهِ شَهَادَةُ وَلَا إِلَى اللَّهِ وَفِي الرِّوَايَةِ أَيُّ وَحِدُ اللَّهِ تَوْحِيد If Tawheed is not going to rectify the people, what is? Allah يَهْدِيك And that's how you speak about the ulama. It shows the shallowness of your, of your da'wah. And when you look at their marks, they go more and more astray. And they start saying, well, in reality, we've got scholars here. Scholars of our own color. What is this? Racism is two ways. It's not just one way. If we look down on a black person, it's wrong. If you look down on a white person, or any of our color person, it's wrong. What's it, what do you mean? We've got scholars of our own color. And they're coming to teach us. You will only accept scholars from your own color? What do you mean we've got scholars of our own color? Islam is for all, yeah. Sheikh, huh? Sheikh Muhammad Amman Al Jami, rahimahullah, from Ethiopia. He was black. We take from him. We need scholars of our own color. We take from all colors, yeah. If he's a alim and he's upon Sunnah, upon Tawheed, we take from him. Sheikh Hamad Al Ansari, coming all the way from the from Mali. He's black. And there are scholars who are white. It's not the it's issue of color, yeah, Allah yeah, Dik. Don't bring issue of color into it. That's nation of Islam thinking, nation of kufr thinking. Where they say white man with blue eyes, this is devil. And they use that verse in the Quran, Yawmanahshuruhum zuruqa. That day we will gather them blue eyed, meaning that the white man is devil on Yawm al Qiyamah, they're the ones going to the hellfire. No, it's not like that. Go, go on and see the seer of Rasulullah. It was never about color, it was about deen, it was about usul, it was about tawheed, it was about ikhlas, it was about the sunnah. So there are scholars from all colors, walillahi alhamd. Scholar from Mauritania, Sheikh Muhammad Amin al-Shimqiti, Sahib Adwa al-Bayan. Sheikh Hamad al-Nasari, the teacher of teachers, who taught Sheikh Abbad, taught Sheikh Ubaid, taught the scholars of Al-Sunnah. And you speak down on them. You speak down, you speak down on those who don't have color. The same way, we're going to have scholars of our own color, or our own kind. What's this? Sheikh Ali Nasr al faqih he said, when he replied to that same da'wah, that, that one, the Asian one, what's his name? I can't remember his name. The same da'wah that he was saying. Huh? Peter, he got a master's from Jamia Islamiyah. The same da'wah of Jahiliyyah. That's Jahiliyyah. Sheikh Ali Nasr said, the Islam you live in in America, huh? Yasir Qadi. Now you have Shadid and all those saying the same thing. Shadid and Tahir going with with the Nation of Islam giving lectures. When was your correction of these people? You give a lecture with Nation of Islam, this Nation of Kufr. Where was your correction of these people? Your attacks upon the Salafis. Attacks upon Ahl Sunnah. What about the correction of, of, of those in your own country? Those who are praising you, Farrakhan praising you, Tahir. Where's your correction? Where's your correction of that? Praising you. Because you gave lecture with them in Ramadan, you partook in their gatherings, giving a lecture. You give a lecture, you should refute what they are upon. You should refute, you should clarify what they are upon. This Farrakhan, rejecting stories from the Quran, the story of the cave, and other stories of the Quran. This man is not upon the Quran. This man, Salama, rejecting verses from the Quran, stories from the Quran, using Bible. To understand what he's upon. The Prophet saw a parchment. The Umar had a parchment from the scriptures of old. The scriptures of the people of the book. Um, the Prophet said to him, huh? Are you in doubt, O Umar? 
if Musa was alive, ma was he would it would not be long before he followed me. Be that he will surely follow me if he was alive today. We we'll don't look at the yani, quoting, looking as if they are the ones that are uh, upon guidance. So Allah may Allah protect us because there is a wave coming. And they're getting bolder and bolder in attacking the scholars and in attacking this blessed methodology of tawheed, of ikhlas, of ibadah. This is what rectifies. Because when you learn tawheed and you come closer to Allah, and you learn your deed, and you learn fiqh, ibadah, the fiqh of ibadat, how to worship Allah. Who's doing that? Who's teaching that? Except Ahl Sunnah, those who learn from Ahl Ilm. What did they do? Belittle ulama, belittle this methodology. This methodology which calls to, to humility, calls to humbleness. You have no attacks on others, you just attacks on Ahl Sunnah, and the ulama of Ahl Sunnah. May Allah protect us. May Allah make us of those who rely upon Him alone. And keep the harms of those who try to harm Ahl Sunnah, keep them occupied with themselves. Aqul qawli hada wa astaghfirullah li wa lakum fastaghfiru in Allah Afur Rahim. You, you find Muslims who are Caucasians. Like I remember in Mecca, I went to Musa Richardson's house and he was showing me some paper that he wrote about the nation of Islam. And I'm like, why are you writing a refutation on the nation of Islam? Why don't you write a refutation on white supremacy? You understand what I'm saying? Like, why do you become Muslim, become a student of knowledge, and you're attacking issues that that exceeds your your competency, your ability to deal with? What do you know about black nationalism? What do you know about the nation of Islam? Because you went on Google, you read a couple of books, you read a couple of documents, you didn't talk to anybody that was in the nation. You ain't come to African American communities and have discussions. You know, substantial discussions with people who are part of the nation who can give you the inside story. To, and I mean, then why do you even care enough to write whatever refutation on a nation of it? Why does that even matter to you? Why is that important to you? Why isn't things like white supremacy important to you? Why isn't police brutality important to you? Why, is, are, why, are, why do we have to deal with those things when you're a Caucasian convert to Islam and you are a part of that culture? You are a part of the one percent. You are a part of the dominant culture. You know what I mean? So you know, I mean, it always puzzles me, man. You know, it's always. I always puzzled. had that question too. <laughs> you know, it's just like, why are you even here? Why are you even here? It's, it's not to say that you know we can't benefit from an imam or student of knowledge who is Caucasian, but no, at the same not. token, issues that are relative to us, that are directly related to us, those are our issues. Shadi Muhammad recently. Um, uh, when an individual spoke about, and that individual is Tahir White. When Tahir White spoke about, um, you know, uh, scholars and the fact that we need to acknowledge the scholarship of of our own. And it's, Tahir White wasn't talking about blacks. He was talking about Americans. Americans who've gone abroad to study. American students of knowledge gone abroad to study. Um, and the likes, we need to acknowledge their scholarship and the likes of that. Anyway, when that came out, Shadiq Muhammad retweeted and uh, you know he promoted it and he said you know when we when we and I'm paraphrasing because I don't re remember the exact statement but when we continue to uh, see scholars through the eyes of individuals who don't look like us meaning black Shadid Muhammad my dear brothers is calling to racism and, and, and bigotry in Islam he's calling to that because somebody might say, okay, if he's saying that the black people need to do, the black Muslims need to do more and be more established, we don't have any problems with that. But when he starts saying statements like, when we continue to view scholars from the from the eyeglasses or the spectacles of individuals who do not look like us, this is a problem, my dear brothers. This is a problem. This is this is bigotry in Islam. This is racism in Islam. Because you're starting to say that you know we need to we need to be we we should be the ones the black Americans the black Mus American Muslims should be the ones to acknowledge our scholars not the not the scholars, not the scholars of Saudi Arabia not no this is this is Afwan this is racism in Islam, okay, so Shadi Muhammad and I and I, and I'm, I'm sure Allah knows best that you brothers would not go to a lecture by Farrakhan. You would, I, I'm sure, I, I believe that you brothers will not go to lecture by Farrakhan. Likewise, I believe that recently, you know, let's say the last year or two, that you brothers would also not go to a lecture by Shadid. Because you see that what he's calling to is foreign. 
him doing television shows and social media with women, with makeup. This is all, brothers, we're, we know that this is haram. We know that this is haram. This is not pleasing to Allah nor his messenger. As Allah Azza says, "Wa la tabarruj, tabarruj al jahiliyat al ula." Allah says, "The women should not display themselves like the times of ignorance." Shadid Muhammad doing television shows with women who are exposed with makeup and and hair and lipstick and 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 jewelry, right? And and him retweeting these type of women, and the pictures are on his website. And the flyers, the, the lectures with flyers with these women on their websites, makeup and jewelry and lipstick. This is this is this is this is evil, my dear brothers. So I would like to believe that you guys wouldn't go to a lecture of Shidi Muhammad. Okay. Now let's take it back to the principle that we first said. An individual is upon an individual is upon the religion of his companions. Okay, an individual is upon the religion of his companions. Shadid praises, promotes, and defends Tahir White. He praises Tahir White. He promotes Tahir White. He defends Tahir White. And so does Farrakhan. Farrakhan praises him. He thanked him. He praised him. Shadid retweeted that. He retweets other statements from Farrakhan. Now let's get to Tahir White. Has Tahir White um has he freed himself of Farrakhan or Shadid? These are individuals that are praising you. Shadid is promoting you. Shadid is defending you. And we know Shadid is upon Batin. We know that Farrakhan's beliefs are disbelief. Has Tahir freed himself of any of these individuals? My dear brothers, he has not freed himself of them. He knows. Now you can't say, but, 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 what, but what? These are from the foundations of our religion. Tahir knows that that would shadid upon it. I, I believe, I, I, let's say, we, we, we know that that would shadid upon is evil. And we know that that which Farrakhan is upon is disbelief. Tahir doesn't know it. People are joining them together. Shadid, Tahir, people are joining them together. People are putting them in the same basket. Why has Tahir not freed himself of these individuals? These individuals that are upon evil, these individuals that are upon disbelief, Farrakhan. Why hasn't Tarhir freed himself of these individuals? And if he hasn't, then does that mean he agrees with it? Does that mean he agrees with it? If he disagrees with it, why doesn't he publicly? Because it's being done publicly, my dear brothers. Shadid is defending, praising, calling, promoting Tarhir publicly. Farrakhan is praising Tarhir publicly. This is all being done on social media. Why doesn't Tarhir free himself of these individuals? And once again, if he's different from them, if he disagrees in their beliefs, he should show that to the public. He should show that to the public. He should free himself from them. He should say, my dear brothers and sisters, I do not agree with the beliefs of Farrakhan Muhammad. My dear brothers and sisters, I do not believe with them in the, I, I do not agree with the methodology of Shadid Muhammad. That which he upon is wrong. Racism is wrong. Uh, showing women, promoting women, uh, sharing podiums with women that are exposed and and it is wrong. Why doesn't Tahir free himself of these of these actions? So my, my 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 statement to you, my dear brothers, for those who those who have a soft spot for for Tahir White, and those who have even gone to the extent that they've attended his lectures, until that man frees himself, my dear brothers, of those individuals, you have to be cautious. You have to be very cautious because this is our deen, my brothers. And the Prophet ﷺ mentioned that you have these deviants during the last days. They will call you to the hellfire. Where, where are our principles? Where is that which we've learned in our deen, the foundations of our deen? So much so that we would we, we've, we forgot that, okay, these statements haven't come from him himself, but they've come from individuals who support him, promote him, and defend him, and he has not freed himself. This is a strong statement, my dear brothers. This is a statement by way of his actions. So I advise my brothers to be very cautious and to not attend the lectures of this individual and to not listen to the speech of this individual until this individual turns to the path, turns back to the path of Allah Azza wa Jal and makes Toba and frees himself of these individuals. Barakallahu li wa lakum wa sallallahu wa sallam wa barakallahu wa Muhammad.
hear, you know, brothers and sisters, they are, you know, um, advocates of just focusing on Tawheed, focusing on your relationship with Allah, and then everything will magically, you know, <laughs> you know, work Disappear. itself out. Right, right, you know? exactly. And that is, that is um, really, it's not even logical, it's not even realistic. And with the deen and focus on Allah and everything will work itself out. And we use, right. you know, cliche hadith and narrations like uh, some of the scholars that said in the past that whoever rectifies his relationship with Allah, then Allah will rectify his relationship with everyone else. As to that point. And I mean, the issue and these were social ills. Interest is not a religious ill. It's exactly. a social ill because it puts people in poverty. Absolutely. And as Umar radiallahu ta'ala anhu, he said, lo kana faqara rajalan. That if poverty was a man, I would kill him mm. because poverty makes people do things mm. that they wouldn't know. So it's a social issue, you not see? a religious issue. You see? And the thing is, is that and we use, right. you know, cliche hadith and narrations like uh, some of the scholars that said in the past that whoever rectifies his relationship with Allah, then Allah will rectify his relationship with everyone else. As true as that may be, mm. uh, but we can't focus on that and forget about all of the, the other else. issues right. in the deen right. that. The deen of al-Islam was never designed to be practiced in the environment that we are practicing Islam in. It wasn't designed initially to be practiced in this type of environment. Salafi is not a card that's going to get you into Jannah. بَلْ يَجِبُ مِنْهُ الْحَذَرِ وَمِنْ تِلْكَ الْمَلْحُوظَاتِ الْكَثِيرَةِ التي تدل على جهل الرجل وفساد منهجه قوله ليست السلفية هي البطاقة التي تدخلك الجنة أو قال تدخل بها الجنة فهذه كلمة كفر إذ السلفية هي دين الله الخالص هي التوحيد هي الشرع المطهر التي هي الشرع المطهر الذي بعث الله به جميع النبيين والمرسلين من لد النوح أولهم إلى محمد خاتمهم عليهم الصلاة والسلام He is not missing his morning tea and breakfast because of the major social ills and that's not New York know that for sure He does not miss his coffee and dates because of single parent homes and crack babies. This is a reality. This is not a joke. This is real. So if that's the case, then how can you spend all of your time, your energy, and your effort on overseas in the Middle East and neglect the real problems in your community that are dead smack?